What up, you guys? We are here for our weekly manifestation oracle message. Hope everybody's doing well. It's pretty late. Just got in from work. We had a big buyout at the restaurant, so there was a private event there tonight and we have just have a lot of like furniture to move around and stuff so i'm tired babies and i ran around before work doing all my rosh hashanah shopping tomorrow's rosh hashanah this is spiritual new year where our soul elevates ascends to the upper realms and for the next 10 days we'll be going through sort of like a judgment day and a cleansing period. And then on Yom Kippur, we draw that soul back down and it's as if the soul has been upgraded. Like you got like another hard drive put in your computer with like more RAM and I don't know, things that make your computer better. But it's like an upgrade to the soul that we get on Rosh Hashanah that sets us up with a new vessel, with a new capacity, a greater capacity, a more expanded capacity to receive our blessings in the year to come. And so if you are, you know, a regular watcher of this channel, you've probably heard me talking about uh, Teshuva over the last 40 days. The month leading up to Rosh Hashanah, it's a month of deep inner reflection and, and self-inventory to check in and to see like where you want to correct yourself for the year to come. What, what do you kind of regret? Where did you fall short this past year? It's the Teshuvah is a time to own your shortcomings and wrongdoings and negativity and ways that you're not fully you know putting an effort in or ways that you're ignoring like spiritual guidance that you're getting basically we um we atone for our sins during the months of teshuva but i think that sometimes we don't look into what is sin what does that count like what are we actually thinking about through the year so i like to go more into depth about that so we've been preparing and so the, through doing the teshuva not only are we thinking about strategically okay the year to come this is the person that I want to be in this coming year and this is going to help me achieve more of my potential be more of my greater better higher self and that will draw more blessing in and I can prepare myself with my new soul so that I won't get a smudge on my soul like two days into the new year or two seconds or 10 seconds, you know, however long it takes us to have like to blow a gasket essentially. So it's like this preparation where we're like, okay, I'm, I'm running through the plays. I'm, I'm going through the rehearsals. I'm going to do better this year. And so we prepare ourselves for that new year to come. And then, so for 10 days, we'll be tested and challenged a little bit um, each day in accordance to that dimension of the soul for 10 days until we draw that soul back in on Yom Kippur um, and, we, and we fast and we uh, restrict the body consciousness to draw that soul back in. But in the meantime, it's almost like the, the grid work is being laid and uh, we're being like all the the upgrades are being done and it's like if you went in and had your computer upgraded and they were adding a bunch of bells and whistles to it like that's kind of what's happening to our soul so for the week to come how do we need to direct our focus i know i personally will be ritualing for the next four days it's like a 12 hour a day kind of thing so it's, it's going to be pretty hectic. Tomorrow, I may or may not have time to do our Libra New Moon Solar Eclipse Workshop. And I will try to, but tomorrow is Rosh Hashanah. So I've done my shopping. I will have to do Teshlik tomorrow, which is when you do your ritual sacrifice. Um, and the more of the self that you give, the more of yourself that you sacrifice, the more of your ego that you transmute during this time of preparation leading up to Rosh Hashanah, it's like the more blessings that you're capable of receiving. So tomorrow, Teshlik is a practice of 
casting your sins into bread or a chicken or a goat and the goat or people usually use bread now so I always suggest using bread but you cast your you infuse the bread with your sins you cast your sins into the bread you think about all those things that you've been carrying with you through teshuva you put that in the bread and then you throw the bread into water and that washes that negativity away. The water represents the fact that the water was not here before existence. And when existence passes, the water will be gone. It's like nothing remains the same. It's It comes and it goes, right? And and we don't need to hold on. Our, our sin is not eternal. We, we can let it go um, and let it pass. And so our... So let's rein it in. So tomorrow I'm doing Tashlik and then the ritualing starts at sundown. And so tomorrow night is the, the feast. So I will also have to like prepare my feast to eat the ritual foods and have them on standby, but also be doing the ritualing. So, and then there's like the nullification of the vows before the everything, the ritualing starts. So it's a very, very dense day tomorrow. So I may or may not be able to do our workshop. I'm going to do our best to stay, uh, do my best to stay on top of our content. But with no further ado, let's briefly look ahead to see what the week holds. And this is no surprise. Alchemy! Transmuting that darkness into light. Transmuting that bitterness into sweetness. Transmuting our negativity and our shadow even into our superpowers by healing and refinement and elevation. You have the Midas touch right now and every project you begin turns to gold. So like I was just saying, this basically reiterates everything I was just saying. That when we give ourselves, give of ourselves and self-sacrifice, when we lay down the selfish ego the desire to receive for the self alone. When we turn a fear, you know, when we face a fear, we walk through it. When we learn to trust <coughs> the creator, <coughs> when we can restrict reactive behavior or thoughts or feelings and become more sovereign and use our free will, then that transmutes our darkness into light. And that opens that, that darkness turns into what I like to call miracle juice. And it is repurposed into the blessings that are coming into your life. So the more that you can transmute and transform and heal and let go of that negativity, then the more light that's going to come in, the more blessing. All right. Interesting. And you don't have to be a, like Jewish to participate in Rosh Hashanah. It's for everyone. It's for every human being with a soul. And even just by knowing that the ritual is happening, you can connect with the light. What the high holy holidays are are an open are like an opening in a window of space and time that allows like a particular quality of the light of the creator to come through that we can connect with. And some days of the year we're we're not as connected with that particular um aspect of the light as we are other times of the year. So these are very special times where they don't come around or it's not available every day to get this kind of intense uh, connection. And then it's like almost like charging your batteries. It's like when you have solar power, it's like having a bright sunny day and being able to like load up your reserve banks so that when stormy days come, you will have the power and the strength to keep the lights on during those cloudy times. Uh, metaphor intended. <coughs> Up next, make a wish. <laughs> Blessings. This is a magical moment. Make a wish and enjoy its manifestation. So again, through these next several days, just being aware that that energy is there to be drawn upon and your conscious connection with it. You know, you can just think about it and think about how you want to grow and change and connect with the light and become more like the light of the creator. You can uh, sit in prayer, sit in some meditation. You can tune into the Kabbalah Center at uh, thekabbalahcenter.com. 
you can uh, go to their like events, live events and holidays section and look up the live broadcast of the New York broadcast of Rosh Hashanah. There's broadcasts all over the world, but that'll be like the, the one where it's happening live in New York with Michael and Monica. You could, I think, pay what you can usually for their, their big holidays. So you can pay like a dollar or whatever and live stream the event if you want to. Um, it'll be starting, I would say, if you're going to look into it, look at their website by like 2 or 3 central time tomorrow so you know when everything's um, officially starting and when they're going to be live streaming. <coughs> and just have that window open because sometimes like for instance they might live stream some of the tishlik and then go straight into the nullification of the vowels and it may not be listed as part of the official itinerary so make a wish now is the time to set your intentions for what you want to be calling in for the year for the blessings for the year to come we're making our prayers and making our um, intentions known and, and, and holding them in our heart. But first and foremost, we're doing the self emptying, we're giving, you know, we're offering, what are you offering? Um, when you come here to worship, what are you giving? And we're not giving like animals anymore for the priests to slaughter. We're not bringing the lamb. We are the lamb that we're bringing to the slaughter. So it, it's more powerful if we can give up our anger or bitterness or a grudge that we've been holding, right? If we can create unity and love rather than division. So making our wishes, saying our prayers for the year to come. <coughs> All right. I know I pray for peace in the Middle East. My heart just goes out to both sides of the conflict right now, but I was, um, I just was watching a video of one of the rabbis that I follow and he's in Israel and they were getting, doing their, um, preparations and prayers and things leading up to get ready for Rosh Hashanah today, this morning, and they were doing it from their bomb shelter and there was footage of the missiles just blowing up over the skyline. So, peace, shalom, 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 shalom. All right, what else do we need to know for the week ahead? Let's just all pray. You know, the more, the more, the most important thing that we can do is set our consciousness to unity and unconditional love in the world. And that's what that was the theme with the Kabbalah Center last year. They predicted something, a lot of upheaval this year because uh, last year Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur fell on Shabbat. It, the big the the first night oh, like started on Shabbat, and when <laughs> historically when that happens, it means that there's extra blessing and protection around the year because either the year is going to be like super blessed or because it's going to be like incredibly challenging. And literally the, um, a group from the Kabbalah center was like just leaving the feast of tabernacles, the holiday of Sukkot when everything broke out, the conflict broke out in Israel last year, they were all over there. So <coughs> one of the themes of Sukkot and all of the unified consciousness this year has been bringing unity in our hearts. And the more unified we are in our consciousness with our intention of becoming more loving within, it all starts on an individual basis and then it spreads outward globally from there. But when we create unity, unity is powerful. Unity is contagious, but so is divisiveness. So is division. When we create division, we become weaker. We lose our blessings. We cut ourselves off from our blessings and our abundance. And so by us participating in this event and holding the intention that we want to be a unified 
whole, a unified group, a unified brotherhood, a body of Christ, so to speak, of the Messiah consciousness, because we want to bring the end of pain and suffering in the world. We holding that intention of wanting to bring Mashiach energy in and end pain and suffering and death in the world will have an effect on the Middle East. It is having an effect on the Middle East. And so it does make a difference. It does tip the scales of light and darkness. It feels like we are helpless. Um, in the face of situations like that, but particularly because of the conflict happening in Israel. Israel is the heartbeat of the world. It's the soul of the, of the world. That's where the seat of the soul of the heart of the world is. It's in Israel. It's in Jerusalem. It's in the temple. That's why <coughs> there's so much chaotic energy there. That's why all the religions wanted to compete to, to own this space because it's, it's a vortex of energy. It's the heartbeat of the whole world. Dream big. Let go of small thoughts about yourself and see yourself succeeding. You know, this is what I'm talking about. It's like let go of the fear that we are helpless in the situation or that our attempts of world change are futile. They are not. Everything that we do inside of us tips that cosmic scale. And every time we change ourselves for the sake of sharing, every time we perfect our vessel to receive the light for the sake of sharing it with others, then that magnifies the light and that makes the side of the light more powerful than the side of the dark. And it's going to be on an individual basis that we awaken and we become more compassionate. And then we show that compassion to our neighbor and it, and it spreads from there, but nothing happens on a large scale. It always happens with each individual person. Even the big world decisions are made by individuals, right? Those individuals are affected by the common zeitgeist, right? The collective conscious, consciousness. So <coughs> if people are growing and changing and aligning with unconditional love and integrity, then they're going to make different decisions that are going to affect the world stage. So dream big. Believe that you can make a difference. Believe that even you in your own house by yourself, connecting with that unity, saying your prayers, doing these rituals and sacrificing your selfishness is actually helping. It's actually helping overseas. Anything else you can do would be great. But if there's nothing else that you can do, the prayers and the ritualing and the unity that does make a difference. So believe in that. Believe in yourself. Believe in <coughs> believe in the light. Believe in the creator to, to work through work through us in in big and small and mysterious ways. You know, we have to bring the light forth in the world, right? The light is there always. Angels are there always. Our spiritual helpers are there always, but they can't do anything unless we channel their their acts and their words and their their works and their creations through. We are the hands and the ears and the and the feet of the spiritual realm. Uh, that's why we're here and that's why we're needed. Right, this uh, the same rabbi who was um, broadcasting from Israel was talking about when Adam woke up in the Garden of Eden when he was created, when he was born, he <coughs> did not see lush greenery and waterfalls and beauty and trees, he saw a barren wasteland because there hadn't been rain yet. And there hadn't been rain because there was no one to receive the goodness of rain. There was no vessel to receive. There was no point. There was no, no nothing to share with. What, what does it matter if there's beauty in the world, if there's nobody to appreciate it? And so everything was created already, but it was just under the soil, just under the surface. And when 
we were created, when Adam woke up, it was like we drew down the goodness of the creator. And that's when the rain came because of our desire to receive. Our desire to, to receive the creator, to receive the light, to receive the goodness, drew down the creator's goodness in the form of rain, which hit the ground and then everything sprouted up. It was like instantaneous. It was like everything was there waiting. It was, it was there waiting in perfection, created in perfect potential, just waiting for the moment that it could be received, that it could be truly appreciated. And that's the moment that it burst through. Before that, there was nothing to receive it. There was no vessel to receive. There was no vessel to desire. There was no vessel to appreciate. So there was no point in <coughs> God doing his goodness there was nobody to receive it. And that is exactly what it is for us in this life when we are revealing our soul and we're revealing our potential. Everything that we could be, we are in our perfected state. Our life, that higher destiny is already there right at the edge of the soil. But we have to have the capacity to receive it. We have to have the capacity to appreciate it, right? And then when we do, when we have that desire and when the vessel has been prepared and built, then that's when that cre the creator lets, lets it rain down upon us, right? And that when, it, when we make it rain, it's when the potential comes out, right? So making it rain, I'm not talking about money, although that might be part of it, but I'm just using that as a metaphor. Break free, break free from the influence of the ego. When the shofar is blown, it is blown to confuse the ego. It puts the ego in such a state of disarray that it is helpless and powerless in that moment. And that's when we get to overwhelm the ego and overpower it and, and, and fill ourselves with the light. So break free. Try different ventures and experiences as a way to grow and learn. So we're breaking free of the patterns of the past, of our old limiting beliefs, of our old um, stories, our old habits, our old routines. We're breaking free of it all. And the old is no longer um, influencing our reality anymore. It doesn't have to. But it's going to be up to us to choose to adopt new habits and new routines and new patterns and new mindsets. That's the most important place to start is just adopting that new consciousness, that new perception. Everything starts from our consciousness. Everything that we create, everything that we do, every action that we take is flavored by the consciousness that we're in when we take that action, right? So we need to break free of being in reaction, right? When we're reactive to our emotions and or re reactive to our, our thoughts. Maybe we've got an overactive mind, right? We need to be able to pause that desire to react instantly and tune inward for the spiritual uh, truth and guidance. So we are... Creating from a different quality of consciousness, we're creating with seeds of light, not seeds of chaos. <coughs> and we are healing our hearts. And there was one more thing I think I wanted to say. I'm trying to see if it'll come back. Creating from our seed level of consciousness. It was something on that that I wanted to build on that concept. The consciousness is the seed level of everything. Our quality of our mindset and how we see something and how we approach something, our consciousness, our intention behind something. And that is Rosh Hashanah. It's the head of the year, right? It's the consciousness. It's the seed level of the year. So try to have your consciousness in the brightest and most certain and stable and sturdy in the creator, right? You don't have to be sturdy in yourself. You don't have to... Be confident in the circumstances, but you were building confidence in the creator. 
So we're breaking free of old stories, the old consciousness, the old things that we would say and perceive and react to. <coughs> yeah, I think that's all. I can't remember the other detail, but it was pretty much just building upon that concept. And it's things that we probably talked about before anyway. All right, you guys, I'm going to get off here. I'm just going to take a shower and eat and get up early. What is this? Morning affirmations. <laughs> I'm about to get up early in the morning affirmations. So, oh, hey, guess what? Just in case we thought we'd get out without seeing this car. That was under morning affirmations. Soulmate relationship. Hope it's on the way. All right, y'all. I'm losing it. I'm going crazy so tired. I will see y'all maybe tomorrow, hopefully. And I'm going to do my best to film our workshop, even if it's a shorty. I'm going to be ritualing and cooking and running around a lot, so I'm not sure. I don't want to make any promises, but if I'm not here, will you just watch one of my other videos so I don't lose all of my <laughs> progress in the algorithm? I swear, if I, if I skip one day, it's like 10,000 less like exposure. It's crazy. They all help me out. <laughs> just go just go let a playlist play or something in the background. You don't even have to watch. Just go run errands. All right. Love you all. Ciao. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.